Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Mr. James Stewart in Mission Completed, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. A-L-R-S-P. A-L-R-S-P. Hey, I'm the Autolite Resistor Spark Plug Salesman here. I know, Harlow, but I'd like to get in a plug for the plugs, too. Swell, let's have it again. Sure. A-L-R-S-P. Yes, A-L-R-S-P. Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs. And only Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs have that exclusive built-in 10,000 ohm Autolite Resistor. That means 200% longer electrode life, less spark plug interference with radio and television. Why, with Wide Gap Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs, your engine idles smoother, runs better on leaner gas mixtures, actually saves you gas. So, friends, see your Autolite Spark Plug dealer and have him install a set of the new sensational Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs in your car. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the performance of James Stewart in Mission Completed, a special Pearl Harbor anniversary drama, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Are you all right for the night, Tom? How do you know when he's all right? Tom and I have a secret code, don't we, Tom? He blinks once for yes and twice for no. Are you okay, Tom? Night. Okay. Sure, I'm okay. I've been okay ever since I got liberated from Sagamo Prison in Tokyo in 1945. Yeah, ever since I woke up in this veteran's hospital four years ago, I've been okay. I got nothing to do but lie flat on my back and let my eyes wander over the ceiling and look at Suki smiling down at me. Suki seems to smile down at me from the little plaster square of ceiling that reminds me of the prison yard in Sagamo. He can't help smiling and laughing because he knows I can't get at him. Suki knows I'm paralyzed. He knows I can only blink my eyes once for yes and twice for no. You see, Suki was in charge of the camp at Sagamo. And he helped slaughter guys like Camel and Jones, Mayberry, Evans, too many more to count. First he starved them until they couldn't crawl, and then he... Well, well, anyway, just before we got liberated, I fuzzed up on my mind and I couldn't remember anything. Sometime later, I woke up in a vet's hospital, California, USA. And I've been on my back for four years staring at that little square. Well, once in a while they dump me in a wheelchair and push me out into the sunshine, wheel me up and down the walk like I was a baby. Only babies can cry. Which road today, Tom? Do we go down the walk through the grounds or the sidewalk down by the flower shop? Just open your eyes wide if it's a sidewalk. Well, good. You'll see all the flowers. Well, here comes Janet, Wheeling Murdoch. Remember him? Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. Hi, Janet. How you doing? I'm getting in shape for the dance tonight. Am I really? Hiya, Tom. <laughs> I'll see you there. Hi. Isn't Janet a pretty girl? I'll bet you have a nice girl someplace. Come on now, haven't you? We're almost at the flower shop, Tom. Oh, see that man in the window. Isn't that a pretty bouquet he's getting together? Well, look how tan he is. Oh, I guess he's a ch... I'm sitting in a wheelchair, paralyzed, looking at a man on a flower shop window, and the man I'm looking at is Suki. And while I'm looking at him, something's happening to me. My fingers that I haven't worked for four years are grabbing the arms of the wheelchair and my legs are straining and pushing against the floor. The same legs I haven't used for 48 months. And I want to cry out and I feel my tongue getting ready to... Tom! Tom, what's the matter with you? Come on, Tom, now, relax. Maybe you don't like flowers. <laughs> That's just like a man. Doesn't like flowers. Do you want to go home now, Tom? It's Suki. A man on the flower shop window, and it's Suki. I know it is. If we can get closer, all I have to do is look at that scar down the side of his face. I gave him that scar in Sagamo. Do you want to go home, Tom? 
Now, don't frown like that. Tom, what's the matter? Do you want to go closer? Okay, if you want to go closer to the flower shop. It was Suki, all right. Yeah, it was Suki. We got real close to the shop and I got a good look. The scar, scar on his face stood out like a half moon. He was busy with flowers. <laughs> flowers, I, I couldn't imagine him working with flowers. But it was Suki. And this time I didn't clench my fingers or strain my legs. I just lay back in the chair and relaxed. And I began to plan. I began to plan. I began a plan that I'd started the day I looked around and I found myself in a Jap prison camp. A plan that almost worked the day Suki got that scar. It didn't work that day. It's gonna work now. I'll leave you here by the door a minute, Tom. Then we'll put you to bed. All right, Tom. Tom. How did you get moved over there? Didn't I leave you right here by the door? Tom, did you wheel yourself over there? Oh, ho, so that's it. Somebody came in here and gave you a push. <laughs> One day you'll be pushing that chair around like mad, Tom. Just you wait, just you wait. All right, now, we'll get ready for bed. You ready for me? Just about. Would you bring Dr. Benson here? Okay. Can't imagine who just walked in here and gave you a shove. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you did it yourself? Didn't know it. You sent for me, Miss Rhodes. He must have used his hands. Mm -hmm. He wheeled himself across the room. Mm -hmm. How are you tonight, Tom? Man, I think that sunshine is doing you some good. Uh, Tom, did you move yourself across the room? And if you did, blink your eyes once. And if you didn't, blink them twice. Uh, no, you didn't do it, huh? Uh, that's all. Thank you, Tom. I got myself in a jam already. It's funny how I grabbed those wheels instinctively. I, I guess I gave myself a shove. And now I'm in bed, and I'm, I'm looking up at that little square. And the hospital's quiet, except for Murdoch, who you can always hear mumbling someplace far off. So then I'm turning over on my face in bed, moving muscles I haven't moved for four long years. And I, in a moment, I, I, I was sitting up. I was, I was trying to light my own cigarette. But then I, I got so exhausted, I, I decided to wait till the next night. And it was the same thing over again. Night after night, I practiced at being alive. Ten days later, I got out of bed and I stood up. And two weeks later, I was so strong that I walked around the room ten times. I never felt better in my life. Now, that night, I nearly got caught. I was sitting in my chair, smoking a cigarette. I scrambled into bed. You sleep, Tom? Oh, you've been having visitors, Tom. The air's full of smoke. Tom, are you asleep? Oh, yeah, that's a close one. Well, nothing ever came of it, though, but I was more careful after that. A week went by. Every day brought me closer and closer to Suki. And Suki closer and closer to some of his own medicine right back in his face. And then something happened that spoiled everything. Tom, we've got good news for you this morning. Look how wide his eyes are. You better not keep him waiting. Uh, Tom, you're getting out of here. We're moving you to within 20 miles of your old hometown. You're going to Colville Hospital. You better tell him when. Yes. Tomorrow morning. He doesn't seem to like it. Tom, what's the matter? Suki was laughing now. He stood on that little square in the ceiling. He laughed down at me because he knew I was going away and I'd never get him. So they were shipping me out on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow was Sunday. And then I had a plan. I had a desperate plan. It might work and it might not. 
but if it did, it would bring Suki right into my room. You see, the plan wouldn't work except today was Saturday. Today was Saturday. And right the day before, they were shipping me to Colville, 3,000 miles away. Today, yeah, today was Saturday, and on Saturday... This is your last spin around the grounds, Tom. And here comes Jackie. I'll bet you forgot this was Saturday, and Jackie's out of school. And he's going to play Mr. Wheelchair Conductor. Hello, Jackie. You ready to take over? Oh, sure thing, Miss Rose. Now get him lots of sun and keep him out full time. Then when you're through, you can help Janet with Murdoch. Yes, Miss Rhodes. I'll see you later. And you be careful. You bet. All right, kid, you can stop. Wh- what? Did you say something? I said stop right here. Gosh, I didn't know you could talk, mister. Well, sure, I'll stop right here, but, but maybe I'd better get an order. Now stay right here and shut up. Now you Listen to me. You and I are going to have a little secret. Are you with me? What kind of a secret? You just don't say anything about what you see or hear until tomorrow. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to help a soldier or are you going to spill everything? What? Why? Why? Well, I'll help, of course. All right, now. Now, keep pushing me until we get down to that tavern and then push me in that little alcove there. Come on, come on, come on. What are we waiting for? Hurry up. Yeah, mister. Yeah, but, but I shouldn't be doing this, should I? Yeah, that's the best thing you ever did. Now, now go into that tavern and get me three dollars worth of quarters. Here's three bucks. I'm going to use this phone. And don't get any funny ideas about calling the hospital. You're working with me, aren't you, kid? I guess so. All right, now. I'm going to watch you through the glass of this phone booth. Stay right out there where I can see you. Get me? Yes, sir. All right. All right, here goes. You shouldn't get up. Hey, don't try to get up of your wheelchair. I'm already out. All right, now stand right there. Stand where I can see you. Long distance one. one. Long distance. I want to talk to Bill Mason at Mason's real estate office in San Bernardino. What is your name, please? My name's Tom Warner. That will be a dollar and a quarter for three minutes. Dollar? Please deposit a dollar and a quarter for three minutes. Dollar and a quarter. Here is your party. Hello, Bill. Hello, who's this? Tom. Tom Warner. Who are you kidding? Who is this? It's Tom. It's Tom, you dope. I... Well, what's, I, the, what's I... the matter? What's the matter? Just can't get it through my thick head, that's all. Last time I heard about I know, you... I know, I know, I know, but it's all over now. I'm alive. Now, Bill, listen to me. Now, listen close. Listen awful close, Bill. Bill. Suki's alive. Suki? Yeah, yeah, Suki. He's working in a flower shop in the hospital here. Are you crazy? Now, no, I've seen him. I've watched him. I've noticed all his gestures. Yeah, he's got that scar I gave him right on the side of his face. Hey, are you listening? Yeah, 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 go on. Now, I want you to get a hold of Curly, and tonight the three of us will blast him right out of the face of the earth. Tom, are you okay? What's the matter with you? I found Suki. He's here right in the United States where we can get at him. Well, if you're sure it's Suki, why don't you call the cops or the FBI? Because I know what'll happen to him then. He'll end up in an American jail, and he'll have a nice soft bed to sleep in. He'll get three good hot meals a day, and he'll get all the comforts of home. Look what he gave to us. Not in your life, Bill. Now, look, if you start driving right now, you can be here by 9 o'clock. Tom, the war's over. I forgot all that stuff a long time ago. I want you to forget it, too. Sure, sure, and you can forget it all if you want to. I know why you're forgetting it. It's because you're chicken, that's why. You haven't got the guts to face him, and your lousy yell on your backbone has turned to a sponge. I only wish Mayberry and Evans were all here to listen to the lousy rot that was dripping out of you. Tom, what's the matter? Blacking out. Oh, hang on, Tom. Hang on. What place are you calling from, Tom? I'm, Tom? I, I'm going to fly on my face. Where are you, Tom? Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to know? Autolite is bringing you Mr. James Stewart in Mission Completed. 
Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. We'll call time from the S-A-L-R-S-P-S, Cell Autolite Resistor Spark Plug Society. Oh, yes, yes, I'm a charter member, and since I've been on the job, millions and millions of Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs have been sold. Sure, we know, and that's why we decided to award you the Velvet Hammer. The Velvet Hammer? Yes, it's for nailing down sales with subtle finesse. Don't need one. Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs are so good they sell themselves. Why, those worthy wizards of cars, Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs mean faster starts at low temperatures. With that exclusive built-in 10,000-ohm Autolite Resistor, Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs let your engine idle smoother, run better on leaner gas mixtures, save you gas. And friends, Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs have 200% longer electrode life. Cut down on spark plug interference with radio and television. So stop at your neighborhood Autolite dealers and have him install a set of the Wide Gap Autolite Resistor Spark Plugs. Or the famous regular type Autolite spark plug, long recognized for dependability. Remember, either way, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star James Stewart in Mission Completed, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Tom? Tom? Tom, can you hear me? Help me, kid. You shouldn't have got out, mister. There, why, brace the chair. Just lie back. There. Yeah, I'll be all right. Maybe I need a little air. She? You look as white as a sheep. I don't say anything about this, kid. Just keep your mouth shut until tomorrow, will you? Tomorrow morning, I'll be going away. You promise me that? Well, okay. Okay, now, take me home, huh? Yes, sir. I was back in my room, flattened out like a pancake. And the bed in the room kept spinning around, wouldn't stay still. Pretty soon I got a sort of a second wind. I decided to try to get up out of bed. And I found I could get up okay. I was awful weak. I'd just about given up my plan when I happened to look out the window. The day watchman was changing places with the night patrolman, and the item that caught my eye was a big, fat revolver bulging at the man's side. Maybe my plan would work after all. I didn't need Bill, Bill Mason and Curly and anybody else. All I needed was my two hands, a little luck. Let's see. I'd have to make another phone call. Well, I... Oh, there's a phone on this floor right in front of Murdoch's door. Hello, uh, this is Dr. Benson. Oh, yes, Doctor. Uh, would you send a bouquet of flowers, uh, that is, I mean, uh, roses. Uh, yeah, a lot of big roses, up to 411. 411. See, uh, one of the patients is leaving, and we like to make him feel good. It's kind of a surprise just before he goes to sleep and the ward's quiet. You see, about, uh, 9 o'clock this evening. Okie dokie. You want some fern to go with it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that'd be nice. Uh, just, just a minute, who delivers at that hour... Have you got someone? Oh, I deliver myself, just before I close up. Okie dokie. Fine. Fine, thank you. I just got the phone back on the hook when Dr. Benson and two nurses came walking along. And like a shot, I dropped to the floor of the phone booth, and I tried to double up like an accordion. My heart beat so loudly, I, I was afraid they'd hear it. But drowning out in my heart was Murdoch saying Hi, something. Tom. I... Hey, Tom's on the phone. Don't be silly, Sandy. Yeah? Yeah. I held my breath, but they kept on walking down the hall, and they turned into the solarium. I, I got up. I, I got the door open. I almost fell across the hall and into my room. I lay back on the bed, gasping and waiting for my pulse to get back to normal. And it was eight o'clock, getting dark outside. The only sound was the 
clock ticking in the hall. I was getting all the breaks. A summer shower had just come up. Light wind blowing. I got down the hall all right and through the solarium to the fire escape. It was easy going down, hugging the shadows. Pretty soon I was at the bottom. I spotted the patrol room sitting under the little eaves at the tool shed. He's trying to keep out of the rain. My hand closed around a broken brick that had fallen off the building. I crept up in back of him. I got the brick ready to smash him on the head when I suddenly realized he was asleep. I took a step real close. And then I had his revolver and I was pointing it right into his eyes, which were still blinking off some sleep. And he muttered and then he started to yell. Uh, what? One little whisper and this goes off right in your face. Now get up and get into that tool shed. Sure. Open the door and crawl in. Come on, quick. All right, now take this adhesive tape and tie your feet together. Come on, hurry up. Tight, hurry. What are you trying to do, fella? Shut up. Do as I say. I made him tie his feet together with adhesive tape and lie flat in his face and while I wound long strips of tape around his oh, wrist. Take it easy. I tied his wrist together and then I hog tied his wrist and his feet and pulled them up tight behind him. And then I turned him over on his side and I crammed two handkerchiefs into his mouth. Put long strips of tape around those. And the rain was coming down in buckets as it made my way back to the fire escape. I made the, made the first two flights. And then, then, then three. And finally, finally hit four and I slid on my face out cold. I don't know how long I lay there on those iron bars of the fire escape. It was too long for my plans. Now well, there was nobody in the hall, so I ran for it. Still nobody in the hall, still nobody. Nobody in my room. I slid open the door and I started for bed. The bed met me halfway and I, I lay there soaking wet with a gun sticking out of my pocket. I spun the cylinder. I saw six forty-five caliber bullets. It was Fifteen minutes went by. And then it was nine o'clock. The ward was very quiet. You could have heard a pin drop. Nothing sounded until I heard the sound of the elevator. And it's stopping on four. Someone had got out of the elevator and was padding down the hall. And it was the same little shuffle I'd heard every day for three years in a bug-infested hellhole called a prison camp. Yeah. The same footsteps, the footsteps I used to turn my brain to water and send my heart right down to my shoes. The footsteps that meant someone was going to get it. And I wanted to yell and scream, Come on, Suki, it's different now. Come on, Suki. I'm waiting for you. But I couldn't breathe very good. Every breath. I took drowned out Suki's feet. So I just, I just, I just took a little short breath and I waited. And I, I had to grab the revolver with both hands to keep it steady. Suki was getting closer, and so I released the safety catch, and, and I tried to keep my wobbly hand steady. He was almost here now. The knob was turning in the door. Suki! Suki! This is for Camel, and this is for Jones, and this is for Mayberry and Evans and Murphy! Suki. Yes. Yes, you killed Suki, Tom. He's dead. And he'll never bother you again. You killed him. Yes, I did. I killed Suki. Now give me the gun, Tom. Yeah, that's it. Yes, you killed Suki in your mind. He's dead in your mind. You can forget him now, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'd better sit down. Miss Rhodes, shove that wheelchair out of the room. You can sit in a chair, Tom, but not in a wheelchair. You're through with that for good. What? Now, Jimmy... What's that? Are you all right? Yes, Doctor. No powder burns? No, I'm fine, Doctor. Good, good. Now, Tom, 
Tom, I want you to meet Jimmy Cato, who works in our flower shop here, and who was Lieutenant Cato of the armed forces in Italy not so long ago. Yeah, I killed Suki. I, ki- I killed Suki. Yes, Suki. yes, in your mind you killed Suki, Tom, and you're okay now. The man you thought was Suki was Jimmy Cato. He was born and raised here in this community, and he has almost as many medals as you have. Now, I want you to shake hands with him. I, I, I'm paralyzed. All I can do is blink my no, eyes. No, 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 you can... are not, Tom. You are going to shake hands with Jimmy and thank him. Oh. Hello, Cato. I'm sorry. Oh, nothing to be sorry about. When Dr. Benson told me about your reaction the day you saw me, I, I was glad to help out. You see, Tom, we're pretty thorough here. When you thought you saw Suki, Miss Rhodes made a notation that you flexed muscles you hadn't commanded for nearly four years. And so we went from there. Well, you you must have thick skin, Cato. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good shot. No, no, no. The patrolmen on the grounds here, Tom, always carry blanks, no bullets. You're going home tomorrow, Tom. Well on the way to complete recovery. And in your mind, there's a big X mark. Canceling out a nightmare of four years' duration. And written in huge letters is a beautiful sign, Tom. And it says to you, once and for all, mission completed. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, James Stewart. Oh, Mr. Wilcox, Mr. Wilcox. Well, Gracie, Alan, what are you doing here? Well, I came to ask you and Jimmy Stewart if you can fix it with Autolite for my husband, Sugar Throat Burns, to sing on Suspense. Our sponsor will hear it and realize how great George is, and then he'll let him sing on our show Wednesday night. Well, uh, uh, look, Gracie, suspense is all booked up for next week. Mickey Rooney, Mickey Rooney will be on. Well, yeah. how about the week after that, Mr. Stewart? No, they're booked up for that week, too. Lana Turner will be here that week. As a matter of fact, they're booked up for the next 4,000 weeks. Oh, 4,000 weeks would be about... Um... Th- that's 80 years. Oh, uh, how about the week after that? Uh, well, I've got to leave, Gracie. Uh, tell George that he has all my condolences. Oh, really? I'm surprised they fit him. You know, you're so tall. <laughs> Gracie, would you mind if I get in just one teensy-weensy word about auto light resistor spark plugs? Teensy-weensy? Oh, you can do better than that. If George were here, I bet he could sing about your spark plugs. Oh, I'll bet he could at that. Everyone is singing the praises of auto light resistor spark plugs. And that goes for the 400 other products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. Mm, Those are nice lyrics. Autolite also builds complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars, batteries, spark plugs, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. You wouldn't want George to sing that? Uh, No. Friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. You sure, Mr. Wilcox, that you wouldn't want George to sing that? I'm sure. Oh, well, good night, and happy Autolite. <laughs> Next Thursday for Suspense, Mickey Rooney will be our star. The play is called For Love or Murder, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Mission Completed is an original radio play by John R. Forrest. James Stewart can currently be seen starred in the title role of the MGM picture The Stratton Story. Buy Autolite resistor or regular spark plugs, Autolite stayful batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>